Hi, welcome back. So this is pretty much the last part about this hip. Um, so what I've had to do in time with a bit of way, because of the dependency loop, um, it's because basically we can't have a natural part bound into the IK chain in the way that we did. That's a fundamental part of it, aka the knee, that's got a look at controller actually operating it because it's going to override the IK chain. So what I've done is I've taken this part here which was our piston which was a part of the leg and all I've done is detached it like so and I can basically just make it still continue doing a look at by doing a rotation and then just a simple look at constraint and add my look at target and just add this just make sure it's on the correct axis like so. Um, this part here it doesn't really matter so much because it's not going to move up and down. I've moved the spring out of the way incidentally. So what I'm going to do here is just make sure it's bound into place, which is down here. Now, because this is looking at this, this can now come up here and attach to this part. There's no dependency loop anymore. This can also attach to this. We've now got an unclosed loop, okay, i.e. not a loop at all. This down here also connects onto here, but this is not the terminator of our IK chain. Okay, this is going to be free to move around and do stuff as it needs to. Now, if I go into my front viewport and zoom on this, if we look at our pivot, I need my pivot to be the same as the pivot for this piece here. Okay, so if I just look at my pivot, you can see the pivot is here on that one and there on that one. Okay, so it's kind of important that we get these to match up a bit. Now, Basically, I'm going to want this to not pivot from the centre of here, but pivot from the centre of this part here. So if I just go up to my effect pivot only, just drag that over to here. Now, if we get these two to match each other, which would be helpful, there we go. Basically, this is going to operate from the ball joint here as well. This means we won't get foot slide, which is something that's kind of prevalent in this kind of model if you're not careful. Okay, first of all, let's bind this up. We're not going to have to do a lot to this now. All I need to do is go to Animation IK Solver History Independent Solver, and in this I'm going to come down and bind it to here, which is our right lower leg. Okay, now if I pull this up, our leg's bending, as you can see. So it's doing as it is supposed to, which is cool. Now you'll notice that that isn't moving in the right direction. All I've got to do is take this and just do that, and now it'll work. Now I haven't built a rig for this yet, but don't worry about it. I need to do this first. If I go into my right foot plate, just here, go to Link Info, and I'll turn off any inheritance of rotation. That's important because I want to manage the rotation for this using look at constraints. That way we'll have more control over our foot. <coughs> Pardon me. Now you'll see this has decided that it's not going to bind itself to that at all. It's being awkward. So let's just do that again. Okay, now let's try that. It might have caught it inside the rig, so I might need to detach it to make that work. Yeah, I'm probably going to need to detach that to make it work. Which is a bit of a nuisance, but there we go. Or just make an add look at target there. As long as it's not the it's geometry of the actual um, leg. Okay, as long as it's not this part here, it's not going to damage our rig and stop it from functioning, which is what had happened before. Okay, so you can see now we have that there, so we can now move our leg around and make it stride a bit better. What I could now do, and fully intend to as well, is just build a simple rig for the moment. So go over here and build a circle like that. And I'm going to align my circle just using the align tool with my IK chain just there. And just align everything to do with it. Okay, and then if I go over here under rendering, if I enable in viewport and don't need that many sides, I don't Let's change the interpolation because it's a bit rough. There we are under the thickness. It's going to be a lot easier to grab because it's nice and fat. Okay, so now all I need to do is go in and grab my IK chain, which is down here. And if I just make sure I've got that grabbed, 
and just drag it to here, I can now use this to control my leg, which is going to make things a bit easier because I can see this a lot easier, as you can see. Now, because I want to control as well the movement of my foot, what I'm going to do is create a second one of these, but slightly smaller. So if I just bring this out like that, and if I just change my radius on it, not too small because that would be silly, and flip it over like so. Now then, if I call this cont r foot orientation, okay, then we know that this is basically our foot orientation and the direction the foot's going to look at. Now, all I need to do is grab my foot here, and if I go to my assign controllers, I could open this up under rotation and have a look at constraint and apply this as my look at target, like so. Now, if I just move this up or down, you'll see that I can now make my feet move up or down like this. Alright? Now that's cool, so all I need can do now is grab that and link it onto this and this means that now if I'm moving my foot I can do that and that and as you see my foot is going to follow this and I can even twist it if I need to or of course rotate it. Now it doesn't follow the rotation but we can move it up and down, like so. OK. Now, obviously that gives us a lot more control of our foot. And then we can turn off the ability to actually move and control the foot directly without accessing this. Now, bear in mind that obviously as an animator for this project you're going to have to keep an eye on this and make sure there's no parts kind of intersecting and sub-crossing over each other. Another thing we can do of course is this. Very useful. Okay, so side to side movement. Which means we get that nice hip movement. Like that. And of course we can drive movement from the hip now. I don't forget, of course, that we can set the hip up lower or higher if we so wish. And as you see, it will drive all the movement from that hip unit. We can connect this to this using a secondary IK chain, but there's no real reason to, to be quite honest. Not when we can control everything using this. And then what we could do just to kind of add extra cleverness to us is just build a third controller which I could just pull out from this if I just make a copy of it and if I just align this um, use my align tool with the hip here oops okay and I'm going to move this on the local just to get it out to about here <laughs> and then change this back to view now if I take this and change its rotation as well to look at constraint and I constrain it to this now it's going to nip off in the wrong direction for a while until we pick the correct axis for it to look at it's just a case of finding the correct up node axis as much as anything we can also just uh, hang on been messing with the wrong axis there, I think. Click flip, there we are. I was changing the source axis rather than the select look at axis, so you can tell it's been a long day. So now, this will allow us to do fine tuning of the hip movements over here, and the good thing is that we can link this in turn to here. So when we move this, it'll move the entire hip system with it. but then we can add additional tweaking to that just to bring the legs back or forward 
up or down as such. I'm aware, by the way, that this is breaking. It's just a case that the pivot is not exactly in the right place for that. If you look, it's because it's centered on there rather than off to the left. All right. So there we have a simple three-point rig that we've just done to control that. We could also have a control for the knee so that our knee is, well, basically has a point at. I mean, these are all things that we can do with this, so it's very useful. Um, but I think that's going to do for the moment. Uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to look at some animation ideas and principles. But uh, for the moment, I'd like to thank you for watching, and uh, goodbye for now. Oh look, and I better move that down. See? Oh! Easy control. What more could you want? Actually, thinking about it as well, before I go away, you could also link this into the toes, or we can just link them into a simple slider sim. And the slide would allow us, obviously, to flick them, you know, forward and backwards. Okay, anyway, goodbye, and thanks again for watching.